Okay. So, we can we have our students come lead the salute? Can our the middle schoolers come up here and lead the pledge for us? Okay, ready? Give me a face. One, two, three. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you all and welcome to the uh, December 8, 2022 meeting of the Herricks Board of Education. Is it working? Yes, yeah. yeah, better. Thank you. Okay. Once again, welcome. Thank you all for coming. Uh, we're going to start uh, with announcements and correspondence. So, um, Brian. Uh, you know, just a quick note. I think it's a fun time of year. So, concerts taking place and getting ready for holidays. Uh, I just want to take this opportunity to wish everybody a happy and healthy holiday season. Everybody in the family. Um, enjoy your nice time. So, um, uh, Nancy? Um, I don't have any notes. Julie? I had the pleasure of going to see It's a Wonderful Life mm -hmm. that was um, put on by the high school. It was a play, it was a lot of fun. Um, I took my husband, and he didn't actually know what It's a Wonderful Life story was. He kept saying, when Scrooge coming out, so <laughs> it was it was, yeah. uh, it was, it was a lot say, of fun. I'm out all the time. I'm out all the time. <laughs> <laughs> but the kids did a, a really fabulous job. It was it was very um, interesting the way it was because it was like a radio show was set back in like the 19 I don't know 40s or something, and it was just a lot of fun. This morning I also had the chance to go to the Sesta breakfast, and that was also a lot of fun. A lot of people there, a lot of uh, good energy. It was great to see. Um, so many familiar faces, uh, young parents, older parents, you know, parents who have gone through the system and are still giving back. And uh, and of course, all the administrators and teachers and everyone. That was a lot of fun. And that's about it. Happy holidays, everyone. Henry? Thank you. Uh, first of all, it's uh, great to be here in the middle school. It's my third uh, day here this week. Um, Monday night was the eighth grade concert. It was terrific. Uh, very impressed by that. Uh, Tuesday, I went uh, during the day to the Syracuse Band concert, which is also great. Uh, last night, I was here for the high school string orchestras, which was tremendous, uh, including uh, them playing a song from um, uh, Backstreet Boys. And, uh, and that, 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 uh, that was a big hit. And, uh, and the traditional uh, Let It Snow, um, at, uh, as we call it, the concert. Um, and then uh, I also went to It's a Wonderful Life, really enjoyed it. Uh, I'm old enough to have remembered when It's a Wonderful Life was just a movie that came on once a year um, on like Channel 11, the old Channel 11. Uh, and then it became a huge phenomenon. And uh, actually this summer, my family and I were up uh, looking at some colleges with my son, and we were up in Seneca Falls, which is uh, at the top of Lake Cayuga. And um, that is the town that was the uh, imagined setting of Bedford Falls. And there's actually a bridge there, if you know the story. Um, and instead of the usual bridges that you see where people put locks on in memory of a, a love affair or a, a relationship or whatever, uh, this has the little bells attached all over the bridge in memory of the It's a Wonderful Life scene. And they also have the It's a Wonderful Life museum in the town, so if you ever get a chance to go up there. Uh, but it was a great play, a great production by the kids. It, it was fun. Um, and uh, and so that's, uh, I think that's it. Oh, the art show. Um, at the high school, we did uh, the art show. Uh, it took up a long hallway uh, in the high school, but it contains art from K through 12. Uh, some really great stuff, very talented um, artists. And uh, it's the best of the best, I guess, got shows by just teachers for this show. And um, if you get a chance to do that again, uh, you should go see it. 
and uh, I want to wish everybody a happy holiday season, and uh, you can spend a holiday happy at the end of the year with us, and uh, wish you all well. Thank you. Um, Dr. Sonatis. Yes, uh, thank you very much. Uh, Mr. President, thank you everyone for, for your updates and your engagement and participation. Thank you to the middle school for hosting us and for letting us have some time in the re newly renovated library, which looks kind of amazing, and the wellness uh, center within the library, which we were very sent in. So we appreciate that uh, tremendously. And thank you to our families for coming out and to our PTA for hosting a meet and greet. Um, I hope they don't take the um, munchkins away until we're done. Um, so thank you, though, for being here. So it's, it's definitely been a busy couple of weeks, and there was an uh, email that went out today. It was lengthy. I know it was a lot of information, um, but if you have a chance, please at some point read it. We did receive updated guidance from New York State regarding um, mask wearing and making it a recommendation um, a little more strongly than maybe in the past, primarily because of what is happening right now around the RSV, COVID, and flu hitting uh, a lot of people in the hospital being overburdened with that. So just take some time to review that information, and we're all going to certainly work hard to take as many precautions as we can uh, in school, encouraging our kids to wash their hands and things of that nature. So um, just an FYI. Uh, aside from that, there's also um, a lot of stuff that has gone on. The art show was uh, one of my uh, my first art show experience, which was fantastic to see some of the artwork our kids um, create under the guidance and leadership of our teachers. Um, I also got to go to a couple of concerts. I saw the concert at Denton. So I've been, I was an elementary school principal for 10 years before I moved into district leadership. And even on our final concert of the school year, or, I mean, no offense to my kids, they were me. Um, but they never sounded like our kids sounded here at the Mitchell concert. It's like kind of unreal. Um, and, and really a, a kudos to our, to our teachers, but also to our parents for our partnering because it's a big commitment to come to morning rehearsals, to miss lunch or recess or whatever it is that kids do to make that commitment. And it does not go unnoticed because the performances are astounding. Last night was the uh, was it high school orchestra concert. And I mean, Factory Boys is amazing, as it's someone who loves 90s music, but um, the performance is, it, I, I, don't, I don't think there's any high school that can compare to what our kids really do. And um, I often take a lot of videos and pictures and I send them to all my friends who are superintendents or principals and I'm like, your kids can do it. <laughs> <laughs> uh, it's amazing, it really is quite, quite impressive. So um, that was, those two experiences were phenomenal. Um, our winter sports season has started. I got to see JD girls basketball uh, yesterday. Uh, we're going bowling next week and, and look forward to seeing some of the other sports as well. And thank you to our coaches for preparing our kids for that. Um, this morning we had a SEPTA breakfast and Julie had a chance to be there as well. And it's great to see our SEPTA community come together with other parents, faculty, and staff stop by. And um, finally, I want to share that I had the opportunity to participate in Challenge Day here at the middle school <clears throat> last week. And I, I don't know that I've ever had any experience like that in my career. Um, certainly not um, personally, but also not as a professional to work with our eighth graders. And I see some of the faces of the kids who were in the session the day that I was there. Um, it, was, it was profound. Um, it was really compelling on so many levels. Um, but it also really centered connections and empathy and understanding and compassion. Um, and connection. I mean, that word is like so very much in my mind after that day. And um, so if you haven't talked to your children, if you have an eighth grader, I encourage you to talk to them a little bit about it. They may not necessarily want to share everything because it was kind of intense. Uh, There's a lot of vulnerability and honesty. Um, it was powerful. And I want to thank um, Brian and Matt, but particularly Gina, who um, did a lot of the organization to make it happen and participated for three days in a row. I only did one day and I went home and I was wiped out. It was intense, not because we did a lot of physical movement, but the, the emotional sort of connection and investment was a lot. So thank you very much for making that happen. Um, we look forward to participating again um, in the future. So, um, and the last thing I wanted to bring up and I'm going to turn it over to Lisa to talk a little bit about, there's just uh, recently a, a couple of questions about our federal team, a couple of questions. There's been some information out there about federal stimulus funds and other school districts not necessarily using all their funding proud to say that we have, uh, and we'll continue to do so. And so Liz is just going to share a quick update on some of the things that have happened over the last year, and we'll hopefully uh, lead into the projects sort of finishing up next year. So Liz, thank you. Um, and I do want to say that I work very closely with um, our business official with these, and we have been sharing with the community from the beginning um, what we've been doing with our federal stimulus funds. Um, we've done more presentations with them. 
So in 2021, the district was allocated $1.1 million for COVID-19 federal stimulus funding. And with the funding, there are two particular um, acts that they were under. One is called the Corona Response and Relief Supplemental Appropriation, um, some people call it HRSA, and that we received $350,000. And for the American Rescue Plan Act, um, and some refer to that as ARPA, um, we received $785,000. For those, both of those, we held meetings with the public, um, with various constituents, and based on the feedback, the funds were designated to initiatives focused on learning loss, social emotional learning supports, and health and safety initiatives, which were part of what was required of the grants and for that funding. The about 60% of this time um, was designated for learning loss and social emotional initiatives. The, the state only required that we had 20%, so we felt that that was particularly important. So about 60% is designated for that. 40% were health and safety initiatives, which included our unit event reconditioning, um, APA equipment, and things like that, and to ensure a safe return to instruction after the initial closure of the pandemic. 50% at this time was expended in 2021-2022 on school year, um, for a total of about $602,000 was spent, and another 40% is planned to be expended this school year for 2022-2023 most of which has already been completed. The balance, which will be utilized in year three, the grant is a three-year grant and it ends in 2024. And um, we'll be spending to have a nominal amount left for the grant for the 2024 school year. And there will be an update we do have on our website already posted. Um, we've done periodic updates for how much we've expensed on those accounts. And we'll have an update posted on the district's website again with the newest numbers and the, the, the latest expenditures um, and provided. Um, and we'll present it again during our accompanying budget presentations. Thank you. Thank you, Lisa. The board has any questions about that? We just wanted to make sure that people understood as you read in newspapers and articles and we hear on TV or radio about. COVID money that was given to school districts that went unsped, unspent and um, were just sitting there not being used for anything. We used our money. We used our money to make sure that it went to the health and safety of our kids. We got back some of the learning loss uh, for the little that we experienced and put our best efforts forward to utilize all that money. So for those who may read and hear that School districts are sitting on a ton of this money. We're not sitting on almost any of it. We've spent it uh, according to the guidelines and rules, policies, and procedures that were offered through that through those grants, um, and did so did so appropriately. Um, this conversation has come up a couple of times in some of the social circles, so we just sort of make sure that the public understood that we did what we were supposed to do with the money and spent it on our students and staff members in our buildings to make sure that we were compliant and they were going to be safe havens for our students when they returned and the educational barriers that some may have existed uh, may have experienced if those we took care of that and made sure that fundamentally those students were, were helped to get to where they had to get to and the resources were there for them so i, I thank you for the report and thank you being the transparency of that. Okay. Anybody else have a question on those? Okay. So I would also just share sure. because we're talking about um, you know information that's out there uh, in the world and the federal funding has been one of them. The other thing that uh, there was a lot of buzz around a few weeks ago was um, testing and how students in this country perform and uh, dips in test scores uh, and and the learning loss narrative. And I, I use the word narrative intentionally because I think it's a complicated. Um, story, and it's not as simple as there was just hit because of COVID. Um, I think there's often data that's that's represented in specific ways for, for a number of reasons. Um, but to that end, we want to make sure that our families and our community are aware of how our students perform on local assessments, which is what we look at. A lot of the data that was put out there in the news was around the name testing, which is a national assessment. Um, but if you're interested in it, I encourage you to research it. I think it's it's much more complicated than um, a, a soundbite. Correct. Um, and, and 
to your point, Jim, also that um, unfortunately we're in a community where our families aren't engaged, our students aren't engaged, and our faculty and staff aren't get, engaged in a way that learning loss was minimal um, in many ways. And to that end, in January, at our January 5th meeting, Liz is going to provide an overview of some of our state assessment data. Um, and, we have a and with Rick, sorry, yes, thank you, with our director of technology and our assistant director of technology, um, we definitely want to. Um, Spotlight some of the work that they've done in, in conjunction with Liz in data analysis and, and looking at that. So, if you were around on January 5th, uh, please join us at meetings at the community center or join online. So. Well, what we felt was a lot of that information that goes out there is really a broader perspective when it comes to true large cities, um, urban scale type of school districts, and what goes on and, and what went on there, and then not really representative of what went on on Long Island, or at least within our school district, which is what we're focused on. So these two parts, this financial part, and what you're gonna find on the January 5th meeting, should you attend either personally or virtually, um, you'll get some more information about where our students stand and how well they did, and what we seem to focus on as we move progressively forward to help our students be better, and our staff be better at their craft, students at their learning abilities make sure that they are truly college ready before they even hit high school, uh, senior year of high school. So thank you for that. And, th and thank you, Ben, so I'm looking forward to it. Um, and we also have a little here, our student right. representative. So I don't know if you have any update that you want to share with the community, but thank you for being here on this school morning. Um, yes, I do, in fact, as you're I'll turn it off, but I'm just make sure it's not there you go. Uh, as you're preparing for the holidays, that the holidays coming up next Thursday, which is always a fun, great bonding activity for all of us. And as you know, uh, yesterday we had our orchestra concert, which was amazing. And uh, in the next two weeks, we'll have our chorus and dance. So make sure to come see that at the middle school. That's it. Thank you. Thank you very much. So uh, that's our update. I think the team members don't have an update at this time, but thank you all for everything. Thank you to the board for your support and the number of the events that have taken place over the last several weeks. Thank you. So we're gonna move forward um, and we're gonna have um, a middle school update. Turn it over so, to uh, the personal economy is gonna give us this information. You need to get your phone line. Thank you. Okay, is it on? <laughs> Thank you. Um, first I'd like to Welcome our district leaders and, and board back to the middle school. Um, I remember the last time we were here together for a board meeting was February of 2020 to present the new middle school schedule. And uh, that was a great night for us. And I think it might have been the last board meeting we had in person for a couple of years. But that was here, if you remember. And it was, uh, it was a great night. But again, we thank you for all the support you provide our middle school. And we welcome you tonight here. Um, middle school is, as we always say, the shortest time anyone spends in our district, three years as opposed to six and four in the other schools. Um, but it's here that they grow the most. And one of the things that we always try to emphasize here is educating the whole child. As most of you know, our students perform very well academically. We also have many kids who are talented in music and art and athletics and so many other areas. But the final component that we really like to focus on here is on the social emotional learning because these are three tough years for a lot of our kids. These are years where they're gonna grow emotionally as well as physically, and there's a lot of changes that are happening in their world. So as a middle school, we always like to place an emphasis on that. Um, as those of you who have middle school children or who have had middle school children know, sometimes we don't always make the best decisions, um, but we will learn from our mistakes. Our responsibility level is demonstrated over here by our lost and found. <laughs> we have we have hundreds of dollars worth of jackets and water bottles. So if you have middle school children you're missing, you surely can find it here. Um, but tonight we, we wanted to highlight that aspect of our school, the social emotional learning piece. Um, and we're very fortunate here to have uh, two great sets of principals, one who Put together all the technology for us at all times and is a logistical master and we have someone who's been here for over 25 years and is a guru of social emotional learning and as dr son has pointed out 
Uh, Ms. Horton really is a driving force behind a lot of our assemblies and programs. So um, tonight we have some students and I wanna have Ms. Horton introduce them and talk about the, we've had three assemblies this fall, all focused on some aspects of helping children to develop the social and emotional learning skills. So Ms. Horton's gonna speak to those assemblies and then we'll have our students just talk briefly about what they've learned from it. Thank you. So if I could just have my students come up at this time, if you will just come up to me, that'd be great. And what I'm gonna ask is that my sixth grade students line up first next to me, after that three seventh, and after that the three eighth, okay? All to my right, that'd be wonderful. Thanks guys. So as, as Ms. Mahoney said, we focus a lot on social emotional learning in the middle school, and it's really all about helping children make better decisions, learning from their mistakes, and learning how to be the best person that they could be at 11, 12, and 13, because they're gonna make a lot of mistakes. So a lot of our programs, I would say, over the last five to seven years have been around social media, because social media plays a very, very large part in all of our lives, especially our children's lives. And given the fact that they are only 11, 12, and 13, they don't know a lot about the world at large and the operations behind social media and the effects of all that. So in sixth grade, we had an assembly called, anyone remember? Emotional regulation in a, you got it, in a, sorry, in a digital world. So it was all about, it was from LICAD, Long Island Council of Alcoholism Independence, and the director of the program was here and he spoke about how to manage your emotions using your social media to make good decisions. And in seventh grade, we had the Don't Press Send program, and that was all about, again, helping children understand how to manage them, their emotions and their actions with their social media. And in eighth grade, we had the Challenge Day program. So I'm gonna let each of these students first introduce themselves, what grade you're in, and tell you one or two things that they learned from the assembly. Hello, I'm Zed Usher from sixth grade. I participated in the um, emotional regulations <laughs> and digital world presentation. And there are many things that we learned in this, and I feel like I should highlight two of the important ones. One of them was things we could do to stop us from being on our devices all the time, like putting on a different, different room or just going outside and getting some fresh air. And uh, the other one was like how to react if people are arguing like how we don't or how to handle it. And these are important because as we grow up into the 21st century, we need to have these skills. Thank you. Hi, I'm Nani and I'm from sixth grade. And two important things that I learned from two important things that I learned from the um, emotional regula regulation in a digital no. world <laughs> presentation was first like to not be on your phone or like any device that you really have because like and focusing on like more important things and getting more important things done and second like thing like lesson that I learned from the presentation was like how to do more things like in person and more in digital because it affects your health physically and mentally. So, perfect. Thank you. Hi, my name is Lila Choi and I'm in sixth grade. And what I learned from the emotional regulation in a digital world assembly is that you should is that it is more important to do stuff that you have to get done first rather than doing stuff that is not a priority because then it could cause more stress <laughs> into your life. And another one is that that you should um that you shouldn't care as much about what other people think about you because that's how what caused the whole entire um problem in the in the video in the summary. Thank you. Good job. Thank you, my sixth graders. Thank you, Mr. Seventh grade is Hannah. 
I just want to make sure that we may need some emotional regulation uh, tips uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, as adults. So, if anyone has any questions or, or, or comments for our sixth graders, so sixth graders, listen up in case you need you. Okay. All right. Okay. Seventh grade. Seventh graders, you saw the don't press send a mindful approach to social media, which is her book. So I'm going to let you start. Step up, introduce yourself, and share something you learned from me, Sally. Hello, um, my name is Dahlia Corpora, and I'm in seventh grade. And two things that really stuck with me from the assembly is, number one, um, like, friends digitally are not true friends like in real life because you could have 300 friends on a game or on social media and you don't truly know who those people are and they could not be who they say they are so you should always remain like cautious and second I also learned about um, digital footprint and that's basically what you leave behind by posting things on social media and how it can how it can impact you in the future. For example, if you put something really mean about someone else, maybe if you're going for a job interview in the future and the company that you are trying to be hired by looks at your social media, they might notice the comment that you made and not hire you. So it's important, once again, to remain cautious. And even though as someone who doesn't really have social media, I found it really helpful because in the future, I can be aware of how it will impact me, like my social media and my digital present, my digital content, how it can impact me in the future. Uh, hi, my name is Colin Yao, and I'm a seventh grader. Uh, I attended the Don't Press Send campaign. Um, I learned several things that improved my online habits as a result of the Don't Press Send campaign. In the assembly, I found out that when you post something on the internet, it will always remain there. Someone can screenshot what you said, and the app or website you posted on still has the information even after you delete it. As part of the assembly, I also learned that colleges look at what you send online. If you send something inappropriate or unacceptable, there will be consequences. One consequence is you might not be able to attend college. Some other consequences are if you post something that seems illegal, then the police might not might have to be involved or you can get suspended from school. The things they taught me at the assembly helped me improve my online habits. Because of these types of consequences, I personally do not want to send anything rude, inappropriate, and unacceptable online. These are just a few things that Don't Press Send campaign taught me. Thank you for your time and have a good night. Hi, my name is Grishan Singh and I'm in seventh grade. In this assembly, uh, we learned about the negative and positive effects of social media. One thing that stood out from this assembly was the three P's. The three P's stand for police, principal, and parents. I learned that if you don't want the three P's to see what you post, do not post it. <laughs> After this assembly, I corrected myself from doing those things that might affect me later in my life. For example, I now know how to press the like button only when the post is positive, appropriate, and not hurtful. If I misuse the like button and like something negative, inappropriate, or hurtful, it could hurt someone else's feelings and self-esteem. It could also give me a negative um, reputation online. In, con in conclusion, the Don't Press Send Assembly was very beneficial to all of, um, uh, all of our students. Thank you, Senator. Thank you. I'd also like to mention that the PTA funded the Don't Press Send program for our seventh graders this year as well as last year. Katie Duffy presented digitally last year to all the seventh graders, which was wonderful. Both of you are supported by the PTA, so thank you. And my eighth graders. 
My, your fourth P is a PTA. Yeah, go to PTA to see. Don't post it. It's <laughs> <laughs> good. Come on up. My eighth graders are going to talk a little bit about Challenge Day, which you've heard a lot about over the last couple of weeks. Um, it, it really is an amazing program. It's hard to describe without really participating in it, but it really is a day about helping students connect with one another and build empathy. But I'm going to let them share. So introduce yourself and tell them what you learned that day. Hi, my name is uh, Raisa Basit. I'm in eighth grade and I participated in Challenge Day. Um, this wasn't a typical assembly where you go to an auditorium and watch a presentation. This is where you like, you have to like, we've like stayed in the gym the whole school day. And the name is kind of misleading because first off it has challenge in its name and you would think it's like sports related, but really I think um, it's really taught me um, to not judge someone's character because you never really know what they're uh, going through. And when we really like shared our experiences, um, a lot of people didn't expect how like, People, like certain people had these like issues in their lives and um, sometimes like people are the way they are because sometimes it's just like um, this cycle of hate. It's like um, someone spreads negativity to like another person and instead of like being empathetic, they like the only thing they know is like being hurt and um, they just spread that negativity. And um, another thing I learned was that, um, another thing I learned about Challenge Day was that, like, you shouldn't really let, um, like, others put you down because, um, again, it's like adding on, because it's like kind of like adding on to what I said about how, like, you never really know what's going on in someone's life. So if they mistreat you, you shouldn't let them like judge. You shouldn't let them um, be so negative to you because you shouldn't let, you shouldn't believe in like a faith that won't like empower you. And uh, yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Hi, my name is Ronnie Marcus and I'm an eighth grader who participated in Challenge Day. Challenge Day was a wonderful experience and it's hard to put into words how vulnerable and also how expressive you could be without expressing yourself using words because throughout the day you grew little by little with group members and fellow peers and it definitely showed how different experiences can happen to different people and how they might not always reflect on that and one big thing that i took away from it was it's okay to not be okay, but it's not okay to not ask for help. And that definitely is a good reminder to everybody in the world because it shows that everybody has their own struggles and you're never alone. So that's what I learned from Challenge today. Hello, my name is John Nell and I'm an eighth grader. I am the president of the student body and I participated in Challenge Day. Challenge Day was a wonderful experience for me as I got to learn more about the peers at my school. I got to learn more about their life outside of school and not just in school to know more about them on a more personal level. My greatest takeaway from Challenge Day was how to deal with stress. I learned to take a breath before, uh, during a stressful situation so I can have a clear mind and get through the situation I am in. I would recommend for anyone to participate in Challenge Day because it was a wonderful experience. Thank you for all our students that were great souls to come up here and talk in front of adults. I know that's not easy. It's not easy for us adults to do that, let alone kids. So thank you all. I appreciate your time so much. I'll let you open up for any questions at any time. Thank you, Gina, and thank you, Brian and Matt, for helping to organize this tonight. And another round of applause for our students. We I don't know if the board has any questions or feedback or comments. Well, I think it's, uh, it's impressive that you come here and talk about it. Um, and uh, that we'll take away a lesson, two or three. And uh, I think everything that touched on really four dishes, so it's great they're exposed to it. It's great they're getting something out of it. Um, and uh, I hope it's a long lasting effect. Thank you. 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 Thank you.
Anybody else? I would just say that, you know, we were growing up, a lot of kids and a lot of adults even say, oh, how come I, you know, I learned this in school and I never really use it in real life. Um, I think every one of those uh, statements and every one of those kids learned a valuable lesson that you will not, not only use in school, you will use in life. All those coping skills, stress skills, uh, what other people go through, how to judge people, social media, those are lifelong skills. Those are something that everybody hopefully will use and, and appreciate in their life. So as much as history and math and science and all those you use over a day-to-day -day basis, all of those skills will be something that you will use for the rest of your life. Anybody else? Um, I just like that you recognize that it's okay to not be okay. It's a really important lesson. Some adults even don't know that. So, so good for you for taking that away and also for sharing it here. Julie? I just want to commend the students. Thank you guys for coming. You are so eloquent and blown away by your vocabulary and your speaking skills and um, the raw emotions that you convey to us. You know, like, I'm not crying right now, but I'm, a, I'm on the verge. Like, I'm about to, to fall right now because I'm so very proud of, you know, the growth that you're showing as young adults. And, you know, I'm just so extremely proud of you guys and so extremely proud of our administration for being able to lead you guys in a situation like this. And um, it really just shows the time that we're in that, you know, we can embrace and learn so much. Um, and it's like to really tackle our social and emotional learning is something that is, is kind of new, you know, it's like it didn't really exist, you know, 10 years ago, 15 years ago, 20 years ago, definitely not when we were kids, you know, and um, you guys are going to take the future and you're going to make it so much better for all the future generations because of the things that you guys are learning now. So I'm so very proud of you guys. And I, and I thank you from the bottom of my heart for sharing your personal experiences with us and letting us just, you know, Feel a little bit of what you guys went through. And, and, and. <laughs> <laughs> See, I hear it now. <laughs> I saw that. Okay, so I'm just gonna first in a minute. I'm gonna invite you all up. I'd like to take a picture with all of you. Um, but you know, growing up, we used to get at least my generation used to get just get over it. Just get over it. It's who cares? Well, everybody cares. And it was a, it's a different time set from 40 years ago. Well, okay, 40 years ago. <laughs> Sorry, 45, but who's counting? Um, to now. And um, the line that everyone says, you're never alone. You're never alone. And that's different than what, what happened when I was your age in middle school. So I will tell you that whatever these lessons are that the, that the district and the administration and the building administration put together went through the PTA I want to make sure we don't, I don't get in trouble um, put forward for you guys it, it's a wonderful thing for you guys to learn something that was never really brought forward um, so many years ago and it's here now and it's okay not to be okay and it's okay to reach out for help and that to know that no matter what you are never alone home, school, friends, there's always someone who's out to help, so who can help you. And we appreciate all your comments, uh, appreciate all the hard work that the administration has done, and the value lessons that you all have learned participating in that, in that program. So now, if you don't mind, I'd like to ask the nine of you to come up, so we can try and take a picture all together, if that's possible. And if our administration yes. has still administration. Yes, everybody. <laughs> Don't press <laughs> 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 I'm going to go right over here. <laughs> <laughs> oh, too close. Wait, Tony, why are you? I know. Why are you? 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 Why are you
So, because I'm sure you all want to go home yeah. and do more schoolwork, right? <laughs> so, if you'd like to leave, you're welcome to leave at this time. Thank you all. Thank you. Okay, that being said, we're going to move forward to our agenda. Can someone move from the rule eight? Oh, yeah, sorry. <laughs> I'm going to move to the room with seven questions or comments from the public. Does anybody have any questions or comments tonight the board? Okay, thank you. So we're going to move to Roman numeral eight. Will someone move eight? Roman numeral eight in its entirety, A through J. Can I have a second, please? I'll second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay, thank you. So now we're going to have Brandon give us an update. We need a microphone on there. Yeah. Check this out. No, This is a brand new place. Uh, All right. So uh, thanks for giving me the uh, floor for a few minutes. I won't take too long. Uh, definitely not as impactful as the uh, previous presentation, so I won't be able to shadow it. Um, so if anybody doesn't know me, I'm Brandon Weisberg from Park East Construction. I've been your uh, project manager for your bond-related capital improvements the last few years. Um, so I've been very excited to bring Harris through some uh, exciting construction projects and improvements to the facilities. Give you a quick rundown of what we're what we're working on and uh, what what the future holds. Um, so just to give you a quick listing of projects, right? We have the uh, high school generator upgrades. We have the district wide masonry rehabilitation and improvements, and we have the high school auditorium renovation. Uh, the, the high school generator upgrades. Uh, it, everybody has to know uh, focuses on critical life safety uh, infrastructure items. Uh, that are critical to maintain during the event of power outage. Uh, so these being uh, PA, fire alarm, um, emergency lighting, uh, kitchen uh, refrigeration uh, to preserve your food and, and resources in that case. Uh, mainly to maintain your occupancy or your building in the event of a low feed utility outage. Um, just, just to give you an update on this, um, last board meeting we had expressed that the project is well underway. Uh, everything in, in terms of preparation infrastructure is, is actually installed. Uh, so that being conduits, wires, um, there's automated transfer switches that sense power losses. Those are all installed and ready to go. Um, we did have a large uh, production lead time for the generator itself. So we're basically waiting at this point for the generator to land on the pad and to make final connections and do a startup and be on our way here. Uh, the, the, the most recent date I have, by the way, for the manufacturer is uh, the middle of March of 2023 for the generator to be on site. Um, so in the meantime, we'll be buttoning up odds and ends, making sure that systems are as ready as they can be to accept uh, that power generation device. Um, 
So here's some photos. Uh, we have some automatic switches that sense when your school loses power and automatically turns the generator on and switches loads to the generator power. Um, that's your natural gas uh, fuel feed to your generator that's been pressure tested, uh, which was witnessed by the local authority in National Grid. And painted. <clears throat> On to the district-wide masonry improvements, which probably most of you have seen at least some evidence of. Um, it's, it's at all five uh, normal uh, buildings in, in your school, uh, save for uh, Shelter Rock and the community center. Um, so basically, the, the general scope has been to repoint mortar uh, to grind out inconsistent and old, aging, eroding mortar to a sound depth and remortaring all the joints throughout the buildings. Um, some schools uh, did receive some localized brick repair and replacement where they were damaged or loose and missing. Um, this school in particular, the middle school, did get a, uh, a high build coating on your existing concrete tilt up pound. So I think it quite looks snazzy. Um, and this, this work is substantially complete, um, save for the fresh air louvers, which uh, get replaced throughout the exterior elevations of the school. This is one of those long lead production items that we're actually starting to receive deliveries of this week. And we're starting to install actually the middle school being the first building to receive those louvers. Um, in the meantime, we are developing, when I say we, uh, the construction manager and your district architect, uh, a, a punch list for the contractor to complete any miscellaneous items that may have been lost over along the way. So we'll look to close this project out before the end of the year um, and close it out and uh, move on. So just some photos of the before and after. Uh, this school in particular with, with that uh, concrete tilt up pad coating that was applied really fresh and milky pounds. This photo was from um, Searing Town Elementary School uh, that shows the kind of difference between the old mortar ground up and, and repointed with the new mortar. And then last, but uh, certainly not least, and probably the most exciting being the high school auditorium renovation. Um, so most of you have probably seen this at this point, but um, you know, we've, we've commenced uh, as of, I think it was August 1st, the renovation of your existing auditorium for high school, um, you know, consistent of all the interior finishes, uh, a new reconfiguration of the sound booth, um, restoring and, and reconstructing the front end of the stage there. Um, so going to be new seating, and new epoxy floor paint that's included with that. So currently we're departing uh, rough construction phase to a more finished construction phase as, as we speak. So basically last minute framing uh, to support some custom uh, accent lighting fixtures. Uh, and we're moving on to polishing walls, uh, laminating walls with, uh, with nice finishing products. Uh, so we're really rounded home here. The, the schedule for this project is to be complete in January 2023 um, with the construction. Uh, we're assuming that the district is going to take some time in the new space to uh, situate themselves and then I'm sure open it up to uh, perform the, the like one. Uh, so just to give you some photos. So uh, we're currently working on painting in, in, in the interior of the space. Uh, the hallway, uh, the corridor outside is, is been pre prepared to receive some custom metal at the panels and lights, as well as um, Future landing areas for some display screens that I understand could be used for maybe photo presentations or uh, things of that nature, as well as a, a large built in display case that will have you know, floating shelves and able to display your accolades here. Uh, some more uh, progress photos um, of the interior of the auditorium display cases, uh, the reconstruction of the front of stage, which uh, previously was. Reconstructed with uh, some some subgrade materials that we've ripped out and replaced with some some proper uh, stage materials and construction. And that, that was my my, my presentation. Thank you, Marty. Thanks, Brandon. Marty, good night. Remind me, where are we? Once the auditorium around January time is ready, how much more time do we need for like the seating and everything else, and the lights and the curtains? <laughs> District is responsible for installing the uh, floor. See if it's on order. We have the major construction that's going to be completed for us to do that. And 
and then our stage curtains um, will be recleaned. Um, all of our tech was done all the time and had to be fire And our sound system will be restored with our lighting board, and, and that will be it. I think what were we anticipating when we last looked at it? Timeline, if they're done around January. It was a mid February timeline, I think I gave. So, and just to remind the community, for those that maybe weren't here, when we opened up bids for the auditorium with the delay and the pricing and the supply chain, there were things that we needed to strip out of our bid and um, have hand over to Marty to work in collaboration with Parkies. So that's the reason for the kind of a split. Normally we try to keep everything with one, but Marty and Brandon have been really working closely together and uh, with Ms. Keegan and Ms. Ms. Arnold because they have certainly moved all of their programs over to the community center, so the community center is not busy, but uh, we will we'll need some more time. Uh, and the middle school. Yeah, and the middle school, yes, I know. I, I live in the community center, sorry, <laughs> <laughs> uh, And then the only other thing just for the board and the community, uh, I, I ran you word on the email, was uh, EBS got back to me today. We do, even though we've been doing the masonry in all the five buildings, the community center and Shelter Rock were part of the bond work. It's just uh, Shelter Rock Academy is always a challenge because of the age of the building. It's, it's actually a, a historic building. Um, so it definitely takes longer. And the community center, we were really just waiting to see where we got through in terms of some of the bids because we were seeing substantial increases. So that is up with the state. Uh, we're hoping to get it approved soon. And uh, we would certainly look to do similar work at the community center and uh, Shelter Rock. Um, windows as well at Shelter Rock, uh, more so in the basement windows was in the bond scope, so stay tuned. Thank you. Thank you, Brandon. Do we have any questions? No? We're good? Thank you. Okay. Thank you, Brandon. Okay, we're going to move forward with our agenda. Can someone move uh, 10A, please? I'll move item 10A, the I'll second it. Okay. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? So we'll move B, please. I'll move B in its entirety, approval of high school course proposals for the 23-24 school year. And the second? I'll second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? I'll move C in its entirety. I'll second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? I so want to move D through I, please. I'll move D through I approval of agreements, addendum, proceeds, letter of intent, and consultant. Second. All in favor? Aye. Any opposed? No, but I'd like to, uh, not opposed, but I'd like to point out that uh, one of the items moves the middle school moving up ceremony back to Phil Center, where it was before um, the pandemic. <clears throat> uh, can I have uh, someone move? J through K. I'll go J and K, approval of middle school honor band trip to Syracuse, New York, and approval of high school model UN club trip to the Eagle Unit Conference hosted by Boston College. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? L, please. I'll move L is approval to dispose of district property in its entirety. A second. I'll second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Okay. We're going to go back to um, Roman number 11. Questions or comments from the public? Does anyone have one? any at this time? Seeing none, we're going to move uh, forward. Any new business or future agenda items from members of the board? Okay. So we're gonna call our next meeting will be January 5th at the community center, it'll be a regular meeting and a claims audit committee meeting. The 19th of January will be at the Searingtown Elementary School. February 2nd, community center, February 16th, Center Street, March 9th, Denton Avenue, and March 23rd at the community center. At this time, again, also would like to thank the middle school admin team, the PTA, and all the family and the parents who came out. I want to congratulate the school on the beautiful new library and Marty and you guys did a great job. 
And um, I want to personally apologize to SEPTA. I wasn't able to attend today uh, for personal reasons I had expected to attend. So that being said, uh, I want to wish everybody a happy holiday and merry, uh, merry, happy everything and a happy new year. <laughs> Sorry. Um, and uh, I'd like to entertain a motion to close the meeting. Motion to close. Second. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Thank you all for coming and good night. Happy holidays. Happy holidays, everybody. Thank you. Okay.